The following video clip is from TrainSignal's Exchange Server 2007 course, featuring over 21 hours on how to install, configure, and manage Exchange Server 2007. Let's talk about configuring transport rules. Because the hub transport role handles every mail that's sent in the uh, organization, even if a user on one mailbox server sends an email to another user whose mailbox is on the very same server, that email will still go to the hub transport before it goes back into the actual mailbox of its destination recipient. Therefore, transport and the hub transport role has its fingers on pretty much every email sent in the domain. A hub transport rule is basically something that allows us to manipulate any of those emails by all sorts of criteria. We can append disclaimers to every email. We can choose to append disclaimers only to emails leaving the organization. We could choose to reroute certain emails based on content, subject line, sender to, a, to another separate mailbox. We could configure the uh, messages to have just a copy spawned of them if they have certain criteria in them to show up at a certain mailbox for filtering or monitoring or compliance. We can um, have log events generated if certain things happen. Basically there's a lot of flexibility. So I just pretty much wrote a list of verbs here that are the sorts of things that can be done with a transport rule. Content can be appended to messages. Messages can be rerouted. Messages can be copied and copy they can continue on their normal route but they can be have a copy saved or sent somewhere um, messages can be dropped deleted or archived or pulled out of circulation based on certain criteria including sender recipient or um, subject and then lastly transport rules can be written to log certain events if certain things happen let's take a look at the transport rule wizard We're going to go to transport rules and we're going to go ahead and create a new transport rule. Now we know that Chumnus wants us to create a disclaimer. So let's go ahead and write up a disclaimer and we'll call this disclaimer. And for this disclaimer rule to happen, I'm going to say that it needs to be sent to users outside the organization. Okay, that makes sense. So we're not going to have to deal with the disclaimers internally if we're doing a bunch of back and forth dialogue and discussion. But if this email leaves the building and goes out to somebody on the outside, the disclaimer that we create is going to be applied. We're going to go ahead and append disclaimer text. By default, it pretty much just uses a very nice small aerial gray text and puts a line separator between the main body of your email message and the disclaimer. And we're going to go ahead here and click disclaimer text because this is where we actually type the disclaimer we're going to create. Okay, that's what we need to do for legalese here because this is an investment firm. And we got that. Okay, let's go ahead and do next. Um, do we have any exceptions? Let's see. No, let's not have any exceptions. We've got that. And we do a finish. Okay, so we've got our disclaimer. Now, what were the other requests that Chumnus made of us? Let's go back and look at scenario. We need to add email, extra, extra email addresses. We've done that. We still need to look at size limits and number of recipients. We'll get there in a minute. Uh, we added a disclaimer to all outbound email. We also need to create a rule that filters mail with guarantee or promise in it and BCC it to Chumnus. Okay, to create this rule, let's call this one, um, just call it content filter, promise or guarantee, send to Chumnus. Okay, here we're going to say 
when message contains specific words. Subject field or body contains text patterns. Let's create some text patterns. Let's type guarantee and let's also do promise. Okay, we've got that part done. Um, actions, blind carbon copy the message to this address. Let's go ahead and send it to Chemnus. Okay, so here's the rule. When the subject field or the body contains guarantee or promise, BCC it to Chemnus. And there's not going to be any exceptions. We just set that one. Okay. Now notice that there's priorities set on these transport rules. Now in this case, they're doing radically different things. One is a pending content. The other one is uh, doing a filter. But sometimes you're going to want one transport rule to run priority over another one in case uh, both of them are kind of walking in the same environment. Let's say I'd created a rule to actually delete a certain email if it met certain criteria. I'd probably want to put it at the lowest priority so that other filters would have a chance to do certain things with it, send copies to things, etc. before that deletion actually happens. So I would move that transport rule up to the top. 